The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, welcome back. Welcome to our second Xamarin University guest lecture of September. My name is Rob Gibbons. I'm glad to see everyone here. We've got a big crowd. Today, we have Pierce Bogan joining us to show us how to use and develop plugins for our Xamarin Forms applications, and specifically talking about custom renderers. So Pierce works on the evangelism team here at Xamarin, and uh, he will introduce himself, but definitely if you ever need anything, let um, let myself or Pierce know. And just like we did last week, if you were there for James's guest lecture, uh, we're going to take questions. If you have any questions, you can use the GoToWebinar uh, questions section there and just ask your question. Pierce will answer those at the end of the presentation, though. We're going to collect all the questions, and he will answer them at the very end. All right, so we'll get started, and Pierce, go ahead and take it away. Sure, thanks, Rob. Okay, so today we're here to talk about how to spice up your Xamarin Forms UIs with custom renderers. So maybe you've built the Xamarin Forms app and you want to add a little flair to your UI. We're going to talk about how you can do that today. And we're just, by do, we're going to take advantage of the Xamarin Forms built-in render, rendering engine, uh, and we're just going to tweak it a little bit so that we can. Uh, see custom views, modified controls, and even custom pages within our Xamarin Forms applications. So who am I? As Rob said, my name is Pierce Bogan. I work on the developer evangelism team at Xamarin. I have a few different interests. Uh, in the fall, they kind of get narrowed down a little bit. So uh, this first little circle is an eagle, and it flies every game uh, at my alma mater school, Auburn University, uh, before our football game. So these days, uh, in fall and early spring, all my weekend is consumed by football and sitting on a couch. Um, so living that sedentary lifestyle for sure. Uh, when I'm not doing that, I love playing Ultimate Frisbee. Um, I'm maybe a little too competitive. Uh, with recreational sports, I treat them way too seriously, as my Twitter bio says, but uh, I love it. And I also love building awesome applications uh, with Xamarin Forms. And on the right, you can see Moments, which is a Snapchat clone I built. Um, using Xamarin Forms and Azure Mobile Services. So we're here to talk about custom renders, but I also wanted to talk a, bit, a little bit about Xamarin Forms, just in case you're new to Xamarin Forms, or just as a review for those of you who already know what Xamarin Forms is. So Xamarin Forms is a set of APIs that allows you to quickly and easily build native UIs for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone from a single shared c -sharp code base. And all this is while still maintaining direct access to the underlying SDKs if you still need them, maybe to uh, build a custom view or access something like an accelerometer or any, even something like NFC. So you can still do all that with Xamarin Forms. So how does the traditional Xamarin approach compare to Xamarin Forms? Well, the traditional Xamarin approach is that you build your UI um, using the platform-specific APIs for each platform. So for example, on iOS, for a screen, you may use a UI view controller and on Android, you may use an activity. So you're using all the native APIs, all the native paradigms for each platform. Um, and then you can share everything else. So everything that's not platform specific, like your view models, if you're using MVVM, uh, your models, your database and web services, logic, and just regular business logic. You can share all that. So Xamarin Forms takes us to the next level by allowing you to share your UI code as well while still building a native application. So what's included in Xamarin Forms? You get 40 plus pages layouts and controls and you build your UIs using either C Sharp or XAML. Um, you get two-way data binding built in. So if you're used to MVVM, you're gonna feel right at home with Xamarin Forms. And there's also a built-in cross-platform navigation API, animation API, a dependency service to access all of the native functionality that you wish, and a messaging center. So Xamarin Forms is much more than just a framework and includes everything you need to get up and running to build fully native applications for three platforms. So here we can see an example of a login page built with Xamarin Forms. On the right-hand side, you can see the XAML markup. I mentioned you can build your UIs using either C Sharp or XAML markup. Here's an example of XAML markup. Uh, if you're used to Windows XAML, you'll notice this looks extremely familiar. Uh, some of the controls are a little different but a lot of the properties are the same. So you can see that we have XAML here. We have some data binding uh, within each of these entries. 
And we also have use of commands with a button. So you can see this, this feels very at home if you're used to MVVM. Um, and this SAML is in our shared, uh, it's in our shared portion of our project. So you're either using a shared project or a PCL. Um, this is where you're going to write it. And it's going to produce a UI for three platforms, which is pretty amazing. So on the left, you can see this login page that we built using this SAML on the right. And you can see that each of these platforms, the UI looks native. And there's a reason for that. Xamarin Forms apps look and feel native because they are native. This is a completely native application on the left-hand side for each of these platforms. It's using all the native controls and all the native paradigms. So what Xamarin approach is best for your app? Um, it really all depends on your app and team, but in general, some good guidelines are Xamarin Forms is best for data entry apps, prototypes and proofs of concept, apps that require little platform-specific functionality, and apps where code sharing is more important than custom UI. That there are some things you can do to spice up your UI, which is what we'll be talking about today. Xamarin iOS and Android are best for apps that require specialized interaction, apps with high, highly polished design, apps that use many platform-specific APIs, and apps where a custom UI is more important than code sharing. So certainly, if you're going to build a super inti uh, graphics-intensive application, you might be better off going with Xamarin iOS or Android. Um, but that's not necessarily to say if you're doing some custom UI work that Xamarin Forms isn't right for you. Just that if you find yourself writing custom renders or exposing services via the dependency service, you probably should go the traditional route because you're just creating more work for yourself. If you have to create custom renders for everything, you would just normally just have in a UI view controller or, or an activity uh, in Xamarin iOS or Android. But like I said, it all depends on your team. If you're coming from a C-sharp background or if your team's familiar with Windows Phone, then you probably feel right at home with Xamarin Forms. So it all depends on the app, team, timeline, that sort of thing. There's no one right answer to this question. So taking a look at the different components of a Xamarin Forms application, at the highest level, um, you have your application, and then within that, you have pages, which is just a screen in your application, essentially. You can see we have five main pages here, uh, content, master, detail, which is like a flyout. Um, Navigation for push pop navigation, a tab, and a carousel page. So I mentioned Xamarin Forms is all native. Uh, the tab page, for example, uh, on iOS, the tabs will be on the bottom, on Android on the top, and on Windows Phone, you know that instead of tabs, you'll have a pivot control. So Xamarin Forms looks and feels native because it is native. That's true from the page down to the control level. Inside of a page, there's layouts. There's a lot of different options from something simple like a stack panel, uh, something really managed where you don't have to worry too much about how things are going to get uh, put together within your page, all the way down to something like grids or even something like a frame that's completely unmanaged where you're defining the exact location of a particular control. Speaking of controls, this is a list of all the Xamarin Forms controls you have at your disposal when you build your application with Xamarin Forms. There's more than 40 controls, layouts, and pages to mix and match from. Um, these are the controls you have, the you have out of the box. Of course, you're more than likely, uh, or you're more than welcome to create your own. Um, what's unique about uh, Xamarin Forms is each of these controls listed here has a native control um, for each particular platform, and you have complete access to it if you choose to do so. Um, so if you want to alter things like the entry, which is basically like a text box, or a button to change something, you can. So let's talk about that entry. So on iOS, it's mapped to a UI text field on Android to an edit text, and on Windows Phone to a text box. So each of these controls, although you're using it in a cross-platform API to describe your user interface, on each particular platform, it's all using the native controls. There's also an extensive Xamarin Forms ecosystem uh, with lots of different vendors. So you can add even more to those 40 plus pages, layouts, and controls that I mentioned. Uh, there's some great charts, um, graphs, and a whole bunch of other controls that are provided by these partners in the Xamarin Forms ecosystem. Xamarin Forms is also extremely extensible. Um, you're more than welcome when you build apps with Xamarin Forms to embed custom views, alter the existing views that are in Xamarin Forms. So maybe you want to modify an existing control, you can do that with Xamarin Forms. You have, like I said, you have full power over all the uh, native renderings for each particular control. So if you want to tweak things, you can. You can bring in custom views. Um, and we're going to talk mostly about that today. 
you can also call platform APIs via shared services. So maybe you want to access the accelerometer, or maybe you want to access geolocation, or NFC, or even something like Apple Pay. You can do that via shared services um, and a dependency service. And then finally, if you choose to go the Xamarin iOS and Android route after a while with Xamarin Forms, maybe the requirements outgrow a Xamarin Forms application, then you can definitely do that. It's an easy migration path from Xamarin Forms to Xamarin iOS and Android. So finally, what we're here to talk about is custom renders. So I mentioned this before, but it's, it's very, very important to realize uh, that user interfaces built with Xamarin Forms look and feel native because they are native. So each of these controls, this is the entry control that's rendered on each platform. It's rendered using the native controls. And this is important because we're going to be tweaking these later uh, in a demo and showing off exactly what you can do when you tweak these things. Uh, and you can even create your own. So if you want to create your own controls, you're more than welcome as well. So payout, pages, layouts, and controls represent a common API to describe a cross-platform user interface. And you'll build that in either C-sharp or XAML. Each of one of those controls in that cross-platform UI that you're building is rendered differently for each particular platform. So how does Xamarin Forms know what to render? Um, well, built into Xamarin Forms to help handle this are renderers. So renderers are there whether you use them or not. Um, they're what's rendering the underlying controls, whether it's an entry, whether it's, whether it's a button. No matter what it is, a renderer class is behind it. Uh, you just don't have to know about it if you're not using custom renders. So to take advantage of this, um, there's different renders for different controls. Um, so as you can see here, um, by tapping into the built-in rendering in engine, developers can modify existing controls, build custom controls, and create custom pages. So you can do everything from little tiny tweaks, which we're going to do, to building a custom page, which we're also going to do today. So everything in between, from little tweaks to big things, and I think that's important. Because I think sometimes when, we, when, when custom renders get mentioned around Xamarin Forms, people think it's a big, expansive process, and it's going to be difficult and that sort of thing. That's not necessarily true. You can make small tweaks that have a big impact on the overall look and feel of your application. And I've learned that the hard way as I've, as I've developed more and more mobile apps that uh, my design skills aren't great, and someone will come along and make a small tweak, and it'll make a huge difference. So I mentioned moments earlier. It's a Snapchat clone built with Xamarin Forms, and it's a great example of custom renders. Um, it has everything from modified controls to custom pages. Uh, we're going to take a look at a simplified version of Moments today during our demo, um, and it had 87% shared code. So despite, despite writing custom renders, despite all that, I still got 87% shared code for a Snapchat clone, uh, which is one of the most popular apps in the United States right now. Um, and it uses a live in-app feed from the camera. So it's a pretty extensive application, and all of it was built with Xamarin Forms. So that's just an example of some of the types of things you can do with custom renders. You can also see custom renders on the control level, maybe through a plugin. I know James Montemagno gave a guest lecture on plugins for Xamarin. Um, there's regular plugins that, don't, that aren't associated with Xamarin Forms that you can use in any application, like the connectivity plugin. And then there's plugins like uh, the image circle plugin um, that are Xamarin Forms specific. So you can see here, this is a custom render um, for an image that creates a circle image in the list view. And it spices up the UI quite a bit. And it's just a simple change. Uh, so there's plenty of custom renders in the wild right now. Uh, everything from Moments, which is a pre-built application, to plugins for Xamarin. So implementing a custom render. How do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. First, you're going to create a new Xamarin Forms control. So basically, you're just file newing a class. And you're doing this in the shared layer of your project, so in a shared project or PCL. Um, it really all depends on what you're trying to do. Um, if you're trying to derive from an existing control, which the overwhelming majority of the time you will, um, even if you're doing something like adding functionality or adding an image background to a button, you want a clickable image, um, you would probably derive from a, from a button there. Um, so most of the time you can build controls that you want from existing controls. And you want to do that if you can, because you can take advantage of all the built-in functionality and make less work for yourself. Or if you want, you can uh, derive from the view class for new controls. So if you're doing something brand new, 
um, that's not in Xamarin Forms. You just derive from the view class. So for example, if you're building an entry uh, control or a customer entry control, you'll just derive from the entry class. And this is the this is the the uh, this is the class that you'll be using throughout your um, throughout your shared layer to build your UI for three platforms. Next, you're going to create a view render for each platform targeted. So we, I mentioned there's a rendering engine with Xamarin Forms. We now that we've created the actual control, we need to provide a custom rendering for that particular control. Now. Right now, if we just did step one and we just, hey, we subclassed the, an entry and we didn't do anything else, well, we just have the default behavior of an entry. Nothing's really changed. The, the view render is what actually adds the functionality. So all you have to do is, in each platform-specific project, you'll just file new, uh, you'll create a new renderer class, and you'll derive from either um, a control renderer class, so like, if you're doing something like an entry or a button and you're extending that, it would just be the control name followed by render. Or if you're doing page renders, then it would just be page render. And then finally, use view render t, t view t native for new controls. So all this is is you're just going to derive from view render. Uh, t view is just the name of the class you created in step one. T native is the actual native control that's going to be rendered. So maybe. In most cases, this is probably going to be a UI view. So maybe you're drawing like a box or something like that. It would probably be a UI view. So you just have to tell the view render what class you're attempting to you're attempting to display here uh, using the view render class. And then finally, you can do all this, and it won't matter if you don't associate the render with the control to the export render assembly level attribute. So this is an easy mistake. I sadly make it all the time, um, and I. I rage at myself and I get mad and I spend 15 minutes looking for the problem and it's that I missed an attribute. So if you don't have the attribute at the top of your class, um, the rendering engine won't find it and it'll just render it as uh, a regular entry control, for example. So the, so the assembly attribute is extremely important. So first I want to take a look at how you can modify existing controls with custom renders. So here we see an application called Spicy UI. Um, because this demo is about spicing up your UI, I figured Spicy UI would be a creative name. Um, and this is just essentially a simplified version of the Moments Snapchat application I mentioned earlier. I've thrown away all the web services part portions of the code, all the extraneous parts, just to focus on custom renders. So we're going to take a look at how we can build a custom Snapchat application, uh, make a few tweaks, and really go a long way with our UI. So let's start by looking at the overall project structure. So in a Xamarin Forms project, you can either create uh, it via a shared project or a PCL. In this case, I've chosen to use a PCL. Uh, a growing choice is to also create an additional PCL uh, using one PCL straight for Xamarin Forms logic and one for everything else, so your view models, uh, your web services logic, that sort of thing. So you can separate Xamarin Forms from everything else. Then we also have platform specific projects. For Android and iOS, you could also do Windows Phone if you were using Visual Studio. Um, but for the sake of this demo, we'll just use Droid and iOS because there's not really that big a difference. It's the same process for all the platforms. So you can see here, if we go back to our PCL, the app.xaml is the entry point for our application. Uh, you can see I've already added some styles here. This is a great way to get started with adding some spice to your UI um, is by using styles. There's some great things you can do like changing the font, uh, changing the text color, things like that. Easy things that you can do to spice up your UI before you even have to get to custom renders. And I know there's a guest lecture on that from Charles Petzold available via Xamarin University. I've also added three views, a welcome page, which is just for people um, right when they launch the application. It's going to be um, a picture of the icon, uh, just some text, and two entries, so two places for them to enter a username and password, and then a sign in button. When they sign in, they'll see a friends view, or a friends page, excuse me, and that's just a list of friends um, that I've pre-populated. 
And so that's one thing. And then also we have a camera page, which right now has no functionality. And later on, we're going to take a look at how we can add a live in-app camera to our application. So let's take a look at what this looks like right now. So you can see it doesn't quite look right. There's something wrong with this. There seems to be like a, a line duplication problem. So you can tell I'm going for the flat look here, but there's something not quite right going on with the lines. So we might want to fix that. That's one, that's one easy fix we can have. Uh, let's take a look at the iOS project and see if there's anything there we think we can improve upon. So really, this is all about making small tweaks that'll go a big way with your application. So when the iOS project loads up, and we take a look at our application, we can see that the flat UI look isn't quite there. The button has it, but there's something not going on that's a little tricky with the entries. So you can see it looks like there's a little rounded edge uh, if you zoom in on each side. And that's not quite flat. We want it to be completely flat all the way across. And you can see there's some sort of border thing going on here, too, because my separator doesn't quite look right as well. So that's one easy change we can make. So let's go ahead and do that. So to start things off, we're going to be modifying the existing entry uh, control, and we're going to be creating a new one called Spicy Entry that we'll be using throughout our application. So first things first, we'll create a new class called Spicy Entry. And we'll add Darren Forms to the project. And all we have to do, remember step one, all we have to do, create our custom class that we're trying to do. We can derive from either the control name or view in the event that we're creating a brand new control that's not exposed in the Xamarin Forms control set. So in this case, we're, we're extending an entry, so we just will we will just make a spicy entry a subclass of entry. And spicy entry will be what will be used throughout our application um, in place of entry wherever we want to make this custom tweak. So now let's create a custom render. It's not scary, I promise. So I already created a controls folder. And we'll just create a spicy UI render. Uh, excuse me, a uh, spicy entry render. Cool. And we'll also bring in Xamarin Forms. And importantly, to add the proper attributes and renders, each platform is going to have a specific namespace that you'll have to bring in. Um, it's Xamarin Forms platform dot star, and whatever platform it is is whatever the last bit's going to be. So in this case, it's iOS. Okay. So now we have, we've done step one. We created our class um, and our shared layer uh, that we're going to be using to build, our to build our UI up for three platforms, in this case two. Um, and we created our renderer class. Now what? Well, we have to derive from the proper renderer class. So we're creating a uh, customized entry. So remember, it's just control name followed by the word renderer. So if I just type in renderer, you can see there's tons of renderers for controls that are already in Xamarin Forms. So you can see a switch renderer a slider render, but we're actually going to be using an entry render. But you can also see, if I go to view render, there's a view render here where you pass in the view, which was the class that was created in the uh, PCL, and then the native view that you're trying to create a render for. So in this case, just an entry render. Awesome. Um, and it's really not that much more complicated than that. So we're going to override a method called onElementChanged. And this is where we're going to perform most of our initial setup for our controls. Um, there's another method we can override called onElementPropertyChanged. 
um, as the sirens fly by me in the uh, Xamarin Boston office. Um, there's another method we can override called on element property change, and that's for subscribing to particular property changes. Although you can also do those property changes in on element change. There's a lot of gray area when it comes to custom renders. You can do things different ways. Uh, there's a few things you should never do, but for the most part, you can do things as you'd like. So this is the way I've been doing them, um, and the way that is recommended from the people I've talked to. So override on element changed. First thing we want to do is check if the control is not the, the control is not null. So we don't want to be altering the control's properties if it hasn't been newed up yet. So if we notice, we go to control, if we use the Xamarin Forms um, IntelliSense, we can see that this is a UI text field. I mentioned earlier that an, an entry on iOS would be a UI text field. So the control property within our entry renderer class is going to give us access to that native um, view for the particular control. Um, so we can actually see, if we go through here, we have access to all the native bits uh, for a UI text field. So in this particular case, we're trying to fix the border. So we'll just change the border style to none. Cool. And if we rebuild, oh, one last thing. I almost forgot it, and I would have been mad at myself. Remember, we have to add the assembly attribute. So the assembly export render attribute. So we'll just add that. And the first one is just the name of the regular entry that's in our shared layer. And the second one is what we just created. So spicyui.ios.spice. And if we go back through, remember we are still using our regular um, our regular uh, entry here. We need to change that out to use the XAML. So we'll do that now. So we'll go back. Doo -doo -doo. So you notice I brought in this XML and S local, and I brought in the spicy UI namespace. So this is going to allow me to access custom controls from within our XAML. So it's just an XML namespace, and we're just this is just going to allow us to access all our custom controls. So all we have to do here is go local spicy entry, and same thing goes for here. So you you can't forget the local, or it won't work. Awesome. Okay, and we'll go ahead and build that. And we can notice that the um, rounded edges around the entries are now gone. And so that's an easy tweak. Um, it didn't take too much effort. It took about five minutes. Custom renders, like I said, they don't have to be scary, people. Um, you can do really simple things that will have a big impact. So now you can see I'm fully all in on this flat look. Well, you can't see because the iOS simulator exited it, but you saw it a second ago. And the other important thing to note is I know a lot of people come to Xamarin Forms and they're like, Pierce, I don't know anything about how to work iOS Android. I don't know any of the native controls. I don't know how they work, that sort of thing. So in addition to taking Xamarin University classes, so you're learning all those things, in the meantime, there's things you can do. So for example, like border style, that's an easy thing that you can check. A lot of these custom render uh, changes to existing controls are just quick Google searches. So you know you need to change the border style to something else. You don't have to know too much about iOS to just copy that code and put it in the on-element change. Now, obviously, I, I want to advise against just blindly copying things, um, but the, the basic point is you don't have to know too much about the underlying platform, just enough to get around uh, if you want to do basic custom renders. So let's also do Android. Um, can't forget about Android as much as some of us want to. <laughs> so we'll also add a new control here, and we'll call this spicy entry render. Cool. And we'll bring in using Xamarin.forms 
using Xamarin.Forms. Remember I mentioned the platform bit? Now you're going to see Android's there. Spicy Entry Render. We have, our, we have our core class already. We have the one in our shared project uh, that's, uh, that's derived from the actual class we're trying to um, alter. So we're trying to create a custom entry. So we derive from entry and our PCL uh, for our Spicy Entry, and now we're creating our platform-specific renderer. So that means we have to look for control name followed by render. So just entry render, just a quick reminder. If you just type render, you can see all the different renders we have um, available. So entry render, get rid of this. Remember, next step, override on element changed. Check if the control is null. OK, and if we go control here, we can see it's an entry added text. So we're using all of the native counterparts for a particular control. So on Android, the problem turns out was with a background drawable. So it may not always be the same for a particular platform that you're trying to alter in a custom render. So we're just going to set the background drawable to null. And that's all we have to do. So we'll go ahead and get this ready. And I almost forgot it again. It's easy to do. We need to add our attribute. Um, type of, remember the first one is the class from our PCL, so. And then. Awesome. OK, so now let's actually build that to the Android player. So much better than the emulator by a million times. So you can see that this isn't really that scary. Uh, tweaks are easy. Um, and one other thing I want to mention is you don't necessarily have to create a renderer for every project, I mean, for every uh, platform. So I mentioned that for each platform, in the slide uh, that I said how to do custom renders, I mentioned that it's just for the platforms you want to target. So even if I were to target Windows Phone, I may be totally satisfied with the way the entry looks on that. That may give me the look I'm going for with no issues whatsoever. And I may never even need to tweak that at all. So you don't just have to create an, a render for that particular platform just because your control exists on that platform. Because you're um, subclassing the entry, you have, all the basic, um, you have all the basic functionality from the entry, uh, regardless of if you end up subclassing it to create a custom render or not. So on certain platforms, it may make sense to do custom renders. On others, not. I've found, honestly, that iOS requires the most custom renders to get a really uh, defined look if you're trying to go for something su super customized. Android, less so. And Windows Phone, I do don't really think needs it much at all. Because I think the Windows Phone looks pretty, pretty defined. Uh, there's not too much you can do to it. Um, so you can see here, we fixed the issue with the line. This is looking super flat. That's exactly what I'm going for. Um, that extra, the extra lines got. They're no longer there. We got our separator here, and we're good to go. So we're in decent shape right now. So if we go to back to good old PowerPoint, we just modified an existing control. It was super easy, and it was a super small tweak, but I think it, it gave us the look we were going for before we weren't quite fully flat, and now we're, we have a flat UI look. Um, but we did something maybe not wrong, but not best practices for sure. And one thing that's important when you're doing these custom renders, although that one does, didn't take much effort, maybe you're building a custom control, you want to be able to reuse this everywhere. So if you're building other apps, maybe in other places in your app, you want to be able to use that without having to create yet another custom render. So one thing that we can do to, to alleviate this problem is by using bindable properties. So you already see tons of bindable properties available for an entry. There's bindable properties for um, things like text color, um, things like background color. All of that's already provided. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but in this particular case, in, re in regards to the border, we don't have a bindable property available for that. We just had to write a custom render for it. So we actually need to write um, a bindable property so that we can alter this from our XAML, from our C-sharp markup. Um, and we can really use this, this, reuse this control in any place we want, because all we have to do is change the property. We don't have to actually change the underlying platform. So I know I have a PCL 
that's just full of existing controls that I've built um, that are extremely extensible. And um, I know as you continue to build Xamarin.Forms apps, and if you choose to go the custom renderers route with some things, you're probably going to have some of those as well. And they may not be big things, like what we, did to, what we just did in the last demo wasn't a big thing. Um, but it's nice to be able to reuse them. So we'll go back to Xamarin Studio. Good old Xamarin Studio. Um, and we're going to take a look at how we can add bindable properties. So there's two main things that we need to keep in mind. First, we're going to be doing all this in our um, regular old spicy entry class. It's a subclass of the entry. So we'll just go ahead and add the actual property. So I'm just going to call it border enabled. And then Xamarin Forms is going to expose to us some uh, methods that we can use via the bindable properties to add bindable properties to our project. So I'm just going to go ahead and type this out. And you can see I'm getting some uh, issues with border enabled property. I haven't actually created our bindable property yet. This is just a regular old property. So I'm going to go ahead and create the actual bindable property. So it needs to be a public static read only. That's just a requirement um, for Xamarin.Forms bindable properties. Bindable property. So it's the default convention is just the property name followed by property. And then we're going to go bindable property dot create. Okay, all you need to know here uh, for this little bit is first we're going to we're going to have our class which is a spicy entry and then the type the data type that our actual property is. So in this case it's a string and then we'll have a nice little lambda expression here. Nope. So by default we want the border to be enabled. Um, which in this case, we're going to turn it off, obviously, because we don't want it to be enabled. Um, but just for demo sake, so I can show from the XAML um, how you would go about using bindable properties. We're going to say by default, hey, let's, let's make the border enabled by true. Because a lot of times you are going to want a border on your entry, especially if you're not going for the flat UI look. So we'll save this. So we've created bindable properties, but we haven't actually done anything with them. Um, there's no functionality behind this yet. So how do we get that? Well, we have to go back to the platform specific projects. So let's go to spicy entry render. And you can see here, this is the part that we're trying to improve upon. We don't want to just straight up set something. We want a property to control it. Now, I mentioned you could also override on element property change, but we'll just for simplicity's sake do it here. Um, and we'll say, hey, um, first thing we need to do is get our actual um, entry, spicy entry element. So we already have access to the actual underlying control via the control property uh, for the particular platform, but we want to be able to access the properties of our spicy entry so we can know what to do. So there's an easy way to do that. We'll just cast our element to a spicy entry. An element you'll see here is an entry. So we just want to make sure that it has that actual property that we're looking for. Okay, and then we can just say, hey, spicy entry, border enabled. If that is true, if the border is enabled, then let's do the default rounded rect uh, border style that they do on iOS. So we'll just go control.border style, SQL UI text border style, dot none, or excuse me, dot rounded rect. And then finally, control border style is equal to dot nine. We can get rid of this a little bit. So now we can see that we actually have our bindable properties working for us. Uh, this is a totally reusable entry now. We can use the spicy entry render everywhere. Um, although I do love the idea of, like in an enterprisey project, just having a spicy entry and calling everything spicy and an entry name or whatever the actual control is. Uh, that's pretty funny to me. But uh, that was just an aside uh, from my ADD. So we'll save this. Android we're not going to mess with. Um, 
just for now because the issue wasn't actually in revolving to borders, it was a background drawable which was causing the issue. So remember we actually have to set this property because by default it is set to true that the border is enabled. Well, we don't want it to be. So we'll come here and we'll set border enabled equal to false. And notice because we're already using spicy entry, that's, that's going to be there by default. We don't have to do any extra work. So let's switch back over to iOS. Go to my trusty iPhone 6, 8.4. Um, although I'm super looking forward to being able to build apps for the Apple TV. Can't wait to get those simulators added to my uh, options on the dropdown. So you can see here, works out great. Um, there's no rounded edges. We're in good shape. Um, and our border enabled property worked fine. So just a quick, a quick aside about how I did the border enabled property. Uh, you can also do this thing called value converter. So um, if you wanted to, you could create a value converter for this so that it would actually be a bool. But just for simplicity's sake, we made it a string. And perhaps you may want to change it to something like border type, and you have multiple types that you could possibly do. You could also do that as well. OK. So do, do, do. Back to PowerPoint. So now we modified existing controls the correct way. Awesome. What we did was cool and all, but let's be honest, it wasn't that sexy an upgrade. We really need to add like some style to our Xamarin Forms app. We really need to add some platform-specific functionality to our Xamarin Forms application. How do we go about doing that? Well, Moments has an in-app camera feed, so you don't have to leave the actual application to take pictures. You can take it from within the actual application and send them to friends. So we're going to want to replicate that today by creating a custom page. So I wanted to show you guys from the small level, the control level, all the way up to the page level what you can do. So let's take a look at how you can do custom pages. Um, so custom pages are super, super easy. Um, they aren't too much work at all. It's very, very similar to how you would do an entry. And I think if you've been following so far, you can say, OK, maybe custom renders aren't that complicated. The same is true for page renders. If you've gotten everything we've gotten so far, a page render is not going to sound that unreasonable. So all we're going to do now is create a new class, and we'll just call it camera page render. And just a quick tip um, for future reference, I sometimes I call this thing a camera page without the render um, suffix at the end. It's very important that you have some sort of difference between your actual render name and your actual um, and your actual class name that's in your sh either in your shared project or in your PCL. And let me tell you why. You might say, well, if you're using the assembly at, uh, export render attribute, it doesn't really matter. And you're true there. The only problem you're going to get to is if you run into bindable properties. Um, you're going to have issues when you try and cast that element property that we were talking about into the proper spicy entry element. So you have to be careful with naming because sometimes if you're using bindable properties or you're using stuff like that where you're going to have to get to the element, you're going to have to get to the actual Xamarin Forms control, you may have some naming conflicts. Of course, it's easy to work around those, but it's best to just add the render suffix. So we'll bring in using xamarin.forms um, and using xamarin.forms.platform.ios. Woo! OK. So this is going to make a lot of people happy. If you're coming from regular old iOS development, say you have a view controller that you just want to pull over and pull into your Xamarin Forms project, it is extremely easy to do that for iOS. This is a camera view controller, which is going to do everything that um, the, the in-app camera feed would do. You can see I'm working with all these native APIs, and I'm using this within a Xamarin Forms application. You can see I'm doing some stuff here with the AV capture device um, class. I'm doing things with very platform-specific things, uh, and all of this is from within a render. So we can take these view controllers really, really, really easy and bring them over to Xamarin Forms. Um, because a page render is essentially, or a page in Xamarin Forms, a regular old content page, is essentially a UI view controller. 
um, you will have no problem bringing over all your lifecycle events as well. So if you did a peer, if you did load, that sort of thing, all that will work great within Xamarin Forms. So let's actually copy all this over. Do, do, do. And the great thing about this is a lot of our recipes on the Xamarin Recipes um, website, which is in the Xamarin Developer Center, developerxamarin.com, all the recipes there are pretty easy to use, and a lot of them are within things like UI view controllers. And so maybe if you're just looking for a quick fix for something, you can just roll on over there and get it going in a UI view controller, make sure it works fine, and then pull it over into a Xamarin Forms project. OK, so first things first, we have to change this to a page render. That's it. And um, next, we have to add the assembly attribute, or the export render, excuse me. And remember, it's type of and spicy UI dot um, camera page. Although I'm probably going to want to change this name, we'll just call it error page render. Cool. So you can see here, this is just a UI view controller I pulled over. I haven't done anything besides changing the actual subclass from UI view controller to page render and adding this, this export render attribute so the rendering engine can find it. So with that, let's actually get my iPhone hooked up. OK, it doesn't want to hook up. That's OK. I had a backup in case this happened. Um, so we will go to get this going. One second. I'm going to get a screen share of my iPhone going, because I already have a, a build of it on my iPhone. Do, do, do. File. Oh, hello. How you doing? And we'll change this to OK. So you can see here, this is my phone. Quick little tip for people who want to know how to, oh, and iPhotos, of course, wants to get some love. Um, for anyone who wants to know how you can go about sharing your screen, there's some great options. Um, Reflector is a great option. Um, however, it can be a little stingy because of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I don't like to use it when I present. But QuickTime is a great option because you can record stuff very easily in HD from your phone. So you can see I have the spicy UI project here. So we'll go ahead and load this up. The reason I have to do this on a device, um, if you're not familiar with iOS development, is because the camera-related functionality will actually fail. Um, it will crash the simulator because there's no camera emulator as part of the iOS simulator. The same is true for the most part for Android, um, and we'll show that off in a second. So you can see, got my little, um, for some reason, McKenna was autocorrected there. Uh, you can see I got my login. It's going to work out great. Cool. So I got this list view. It's got a list of my friends, um, Joseph, Mike, James, Kristen, Jamie, uh, and then all those were members of the evangelism team, and then that and Miguel. And you can see here, I actually have a live camera feed, so let's get a little bit of love for Boston. So that's the outside. Uh, you can see all the swag we got in the office, and let's get a selfie. And that's all it takes to get a live camera view working from iOS. Um, so we already had an, a UI view controller. All we did was pull it over, and we're using this within a Xamarin Forms project. This is amazing. Um, it can change your life, because I didn't realize how easy it was to pull over existing UI view controllers. Uh, but it's super, super easy. OK. So let's turn our focus to Android, because we're almost done with our application. Uh, you can see here I've already gone ahead and created a camera page for time's sake. Um, it's very similar, actually, uh, between Android and iOS. I will say it's not quite as easy to just pull over existing um, activities into um, page renders, it is for UI view controllers into page renders. And the reason for that is the activity lifecycle is a little bit different for a Xamarin.Forms application than a regular application. And so 
you're going to get a lot of the same uh, functionality as, a, as an activity in here, but you can't just copy and paste. And as you can see here, I have on element change working for me, whereas in the other camera page render, I didn't even have to override that. I just brought in my existing code set. Now, obviously, if I wanted to do something with bindable properties, I would have to do that, um, but I'm not in this case, so we're all good. So you can see here I'm using all these platform-specific things. I'm using a surface texture, a texture view, um, all these cam camera APIs that are specific just to Android. I'm using all of these, and I'm using them within a Xamarin Forms project. And you can see here, you can even bring in some Android-specific um, interfaces and that sort of thing. Um, like, for example, in regard to the camera on Android, you have to override iSurface Texture Listener if you're using the regular camera APIs. Um, and you can do that with page renders. So you can do a lot of the same things as you would do for a normal activity just in a page render. Okay, so we'll change the startup project. And we're going to deploy to my phone. Or my test device, I guess I should say. It's actually pretty funny. My uh, fiance jokes because I have like six phones because I'm always testing stuff and that sort of thing, like four different platforms. And uh, she always jokes that that uh, that I have those phones to hide something from her. So that's pretty funny. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna get my mirroring going so you guys can see this. For Android screen mirroring, I recommend a, a program called Visor. It's brand new, um, and it's excellent. Um, and of course, I say that something is going to go wrong. But um, you can see here the similar thing. We got the image. We got the moments label. We got our, our entries that we've, that we've made nice and custom. Uh, we, we took away those, those very odd uh, lines that were just randomly showing in the back of username and password. Um, and let's sign in. And you can see here, we have a list view, uh, just like we did on iOS. And if we scroll to the right, uh, we can see that the camera is also working. Uh, there's outside. It's a nice, pretty Boston day. And of course, I have to get the selfie in as well. So Xarin Forms makes things extremely easy. You can do everything from simple page renders, or excuse me, from modifying existing controls all the way up to creating custom pages. And so in this demo today, we did everything from making a little small tweak to making a huge tweak. An entire page of our application was a custom render. So as far as resources go, um, there's a few good ones. Uh, the Xamarin blog, while we may not have like a dedicated custom renders blog, um, the Xamarin blog is the best place to keep up to date with all the latest Xamarin announcements. And I encourage you to either, you know, RSS feed it or add it to Feedly or whatever, or subscribe to the Xamarin blog because we ha always have the latest updates there. Um, you would have heard about moments if you were following the Xamarin blog. Um, so we all, we're always building cool things and blogging about it on the Xamarin blog. There's also great custom renders documentation uh, via the Xamarin Developer Center, developer.xamarin.com, um, that you can check out. Uh, I have word that that's supposed to be expanded a little bit, so that's great news. Um, and Mark Smith also has a great video. He's, he's the father of the custom render documentation. He created customizing control rendering in Xamarin Forms uh, over a year ago now, uh, and it was the first bit of documentation on custom renders. That's a great talk to check out if you want to see maybe how to build your own custom control uh, with Xamarin Forms. And then finally, creating mobile apps with Xamarin Forms, the Petzl book. Great example if you're trying to get started with Xamarin Forms. Um, even if you're not, there's, they're adding new chapters all the time. The book's still in preview um, as of this date. And there's a, there's a lot of great chapters. I learn something new every time I check it out. And of course, it's written by Charles Petzl. So I mean, who wouldn't want that? Um, additionally, I have slides and code that will be available after this uh, via the Xamarin University portal, I guess. You go to like my lecture and you can see it. Um, so you'll be able to download all this code, uh, all of it obviously MIT, so you can feel free to steal the camera bit if you'd like. That seems to be a popular little snippet. And then finally, Xamarin Forms Labs. Um, I'm mentioning Xamarin Forms Labs not because, if you, know, if you don't know what Xamarin Forms Labs is, Xamarin Forms Labs is just a library that has existing, has controls that the community has made that they made available to everyone else, as well as some services they've exposed, like geolocation, that sort of thing, uh, for everybody. 
Now, I'm not necessarily endorsing the project as, hey, you should always use Xamarin Forms Labs controls instead of just using custom renders. Sometimes that might be the right way to go, but the main reason I list it here as a resource is because it's an excellent place and an excellent place to see all different types of custom renders. So you can see uh, modifications to existing controls. I know they have an entry that they have there. It's like an extended entry or something like that they call. Um, they have all kinds of controls. I think they have like over 20. Uh, they have a whole bunch of custom controls and they also have a whole bunch of uses of the dependency service. So if you're just looking for how to bring platform specific either UI stuff or just features in general like NFC into your Xamarin, app, Xamarin Forms applications, even if you don't end up using their controls, I think that's a great place to get started with Xamarin Forms uh, and building custom renders. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank you guys for having me today. I'm going to go through some of the some of the questions that I see here on the right hand side. If I can find the questions prompt, Rob, do you want to read out some of them because I'm having trouble yeah, uh, viewing right. the actual questions? Sure. No problem. Uh, so our first question is, uh, although the custom renders make the Xamarin forms highly customizable, what's the, the server line that tells you that the app should have been built with Xamarin native in the first place? When do you decide too many custom renders is just too much? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I honestly think moments, if I was going to add a little bit more custom renders to it, I think it would be too much. Um, if you find yourself writing more code with custom renders than you would had you just gone platform specific. Because the thing, especially if you're doing thing like, things like pages, you're, you're literally writing it in the platform specific APIs and then you're wrapping it in a renderer class. So you're actually creating more work for yourself than you need to. Um, so if you find yourself doing things like that, then you're probably just better off going with traditional Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android. Um, if you're going to be building things that are really, really customized and you know that from the start, then you should probably just go straight traditional development. If you don't really care that much about the UI, um, you care a lot more about code sharing, that's not to say you don't care at all about the UI, but just that code sharing is a, more, a higher priority, um, definitely go with Xamarin Forms, and you can do things like custom renders to tweak up the UI, and I mentioned that the, the path to upgrade from, or the path to move from Xamarin Forms to, tra to traditional development is super, super easy. So in the event that you maybe outgrow or you want to change the UI up a bit and you want to add a lot more you know, platform-specific stuff to your application, the, the migration path is really simple. So I would recommend, uh, it's, it's really hard to know without knowing the particular app and the particular team involved. It's, it's, it's a gray area for sure. Yeah, there's no one answer that fits everyone. Yep. Uh, next question is, uh, I know there's no problem to use navigation pages inside of tab pages but can you use tab pages inside of a navigation page? That's a great question. Um, to be honest, I'm not actually positive either way. Um, I would imagine you probably cannot. I think navigation page, uh, the uh, parameters call for a content page, but I'm not positive on that. Let's see. We can check that out just right now. Um, so... So I'm not sure if it's technically possible or not. It might be, but I would definitely advise against it. It goes against all the UI design guidelines from both platforms. It's not something you would normally see or ever do, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, no, so, I agree. So even if it's not blocked from a technical standpoint, I would definitely uh, think very hard about uh, if you would ever want to do that. It's not something users are going to be expecting uh, to ever happen, and it's probably going to cause you a lot more trouble than it's worth. That's true. Um, so Tom asks, does it matter where the custom renders are located within, within, within each uh, client platform? Nope, doesn't matter at all. As long as you have that export render assembly level attribute there, it's going to find it. You don't have to put it in any particular folder or any particular location. You just have to make sure it's in the right project, and that's it. And you have to make sure that the, the assembly attribute's outside of a namespace, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Um, uh, is the variable named control, is that inherited from the entry render? So this is when you were uh, demoing some stuff probably a while ago. So you had a variable named control. Yeah, so you get that when you subclass the actual entry render, you do access the control um, property, which is 
just going to have the actual native control for the, that particular platform. So we saw it was an edit entry, uh, excuse me, an edit text on Android, and we saw it was a UI text field on iOS. And so yeah, you get access to that via subclassing that, um, and then you can access the actual um, Xamarin Forms control uh, via the element property. Great. Next is uh, when will the Android App Compat library be supported in Xamarin Forms? That's an excellent question, and I actually don't know the answer to it. Um, I don't do too much with Android. Uh, one of the things I love about Xamarin Forms is that um, it can kind of cover up our weak spots a little bit. So I'm actually an iOS developer by heart, but Xamarin Forms allows me to cover a platform that I probably wouldn't have even been able to develop for just because I'm much more of an iOS guy. Um, but by building my application with Xamarin Forms, well, I got Android for free, pretty much. So um, I actually don't know the answer to that. That's a great question for either the Xamarin Forums or um, or for Rob. Well, I would say uh, the App Compat support library wouldn't be supported in Xamarin Forms anyway. Xamarin Forms is uh, an abstraction. It shouldn't have really any um, dependencies on the UI at all, if, at least from the cross-platform part of it. Now, you can use the App Compat in your Android-specific project, and you could do that, and you could do, like um, Pierce said with the page render, you could take complete control over that and use the App Compat library there, uh, but in the actual you know, shared DLL, it obviously would not ever be supported. So, yep, and, um, and I believe I believe that James Montemagno actually wrote a blog post on the Xamarin blog about using App Combat with just the um, Android project of a Xamarin Forms application. Yeah, I think um, he's got one on that, and he's got one on like material design in Xamarin Forms and that kind of stuff too. Yep. So, yep. yeah, check out James's blog. Uh, a couple more. Um, two questions. What's the best practice for packaging up your custom renderers for use in other applications? And uh, part two is, what's the best way to ship default styling, preferring, preferably in XAML, with the renderers that can be configurable in the application's app XAML? Okay, first question. Um, best way to package them? Um, the way I've been doing it is just by having um, a separate solution that's just um, regular, old, you have your PCL, you have your Android, and you have your iOS, and then you have particular... Um, You'll, you'll compile it and you'll get particular D, DLLs. Uh, you'll obviously strip it of everything it doesn't need that's non-control related, um, and then you can just reference that from your project. Um, although, if you really only have like one or two, um, then it's probably best to just actually add it directly to your project. What was the second question again? Uh, shipping default styling, preferably in XAML, that the, with the renderers that can still be configurable in the application's app XAML. Okay, so he wants to use the styling in a custom renderer. Correct. Um, that's a great question. Um, I'm actually not totally positive on that, um, but I would imagine you should be able to create custom styles, um, especially for, uh, for controls that are already part of the existing Xamarin Forms control set. I don't think you'd have any problems doing that but for controls maybe outside of the Xamarin form subset, I'm not totally sure. I think there may be something separate you have to do to uh, wire up that styling for totally custom controls, uh, but that's a great question. So I'm thinking, can you do something along the lines of <clears throat> creating a NuGet package that will install your custom control in your PCL, and that has all the XAML styling uh, in, it, in it, and then the NuGet package would install the platform specific renderer in each project and that's where you would then change any styling is there as well any platform specific one so you'd have one NuGet package kind of uh, controlling that you might be able to do that just top of my head I'm... oh yeah and I just remembered something as well if you're looking for examples of how to package up uh, your controls uh, for use like in a control maybe you want to build your own control library or something like that you should check out um, I mentioned it earlier in the slides, but you should check out James's Circle Image plugin uh, because he does that exactly. He packages it up, and he, although he's only doing it for one particular control, the same process would apply if you wanted to package up maybe a collection of controls. And that's a great example, all open source, of course. So, 
So the short answer to every one of these questions is go read James's blog. He's probably already <laughs> answered everything. Yeah, that's that's always the answer. James Montemagno knows it all, so his blog's the place to check out. All right, uh, next one. Is there any possible way to pull over an existing view controller that's written in, in Objective-C or Swift, or are you only referring to view controllers that might have existing code that were created in C-sharp? Uh, yes, it would be possible. You would just create a binding um, for that particular um, view controller, um, and you could bring it over, um, create a class, and then put it within a... Um, page render, although I would recommend against that because it's just so many things that are piling up against each other. I would recommend if you were going to do that to just, as long as it's not like a, because if you're, I mean, if you're pulling over an entire application that was written in Objective-C and trying to put it in Xamarin Forms, uh, then you probably should go the traditional route, right? Because you have all this platform-specific stuff already, um, but you're probably best off going with that. So although it probably is technically possible, I would probably recommend against that just because there's would be too many layers of abstraction. Yeah, I totally agree. And one thing we always have to keep in mind here is what is the point of Xamarin Forms? And we really try to make sure everybody knows the point is prototyping simple applications that uh, don't need a lot of custom UI, kind of like the slide you showed at the beginning of the, the lecture there. Uh, make sure you're using the right tool for the job. Xamarin Forms is not always the right tool. Uh, don't try to shoehorn things in just because you want to use Xamarin Forms. Exactly. Um, question, how do you deal with different screen resolutions with forms? For example, the image on the welcome page. Is it only a one size image? Great question. So it depends on the platform. So Xamarin Forms is going to handle a lot of the stuff with images behind the scenes, and there's a great doc on that, uh, working with images uh, with Xamarin Forms available in the Xamarin Developer Center. Um, but it you would do it on, the, on ex how each platform would do it. So for example, if we look at Android, you would do it uh, via your resources, you have all these different drawables for different screen resolutions, and you would put different resolution images in each one. Um, same thing goes for iOS. The default iOS way of handling images is to put them in your resources folder and make sure that their um, build action is set to bundle resource, and it would be good to go. So you would add like a 2x and 3x, uh, as they did with the icon here. So the actual plat underlying platforms will handle that for you. Xamarin Forms doesn't really handle it. It's on a per-platform basis. OK, and another one. What's the best practice to hook or unhook events and delegates in the custom renders? Is anything changed recently how you would handle e.old element, e.new element? Uh, can you repeat that? Sorry, cut and cut out a little bit. Yep. So what's the best practice to hook and unhook events or uh, delegates in custom renders? Is there anything changed recently on how you would handle e.old element and e.new element? No, I don't think anything's really changed um, from that perspective. Um, anything you can do in general at the Xamarin Forms level, you should do. Um, because I know a lot of people have tried putting like a ton of gesture recognizers um, within a custom render um, that are platform-specific gesture recognizers. And things can get fishy real quick, um, mainly because you don't know who has control of certain things and events and that sort of thing. So if you can do it at the actual Xamarin Forms level, I would recommend that. But otherwise, yeah, you may have to do it at the, at the per-platform level. But if you can avoid it, I would definitely avoid it. OK. Uh, is there any way to make a custom control appear in the toolbox? Now, I assume this is for uh, Xamarin Studio, but we could apply this to the Visual Studio as well, I suppose. Um, so the toolbox, um, so I do not know of a way that you can do it, um, with Xamarin Forms. I know with iOS development and Xamarin Studio, you can make custom controls show up, um, in a storyboard toolbox, but I've never seen a way to make a custom Xamarin Forms control show up in the actual toolbox for a Xamarin Forms page. Well, and we got to remember there's no designer for Xamarin Forms, yeah. so there's really no point in putting something in the toolbox because there's no no place to drag and drop it. That's a great and point. And the renderer itself is just a, a C sharp class. There's no a visualization of the renderer itself. So until such time as we have a designer, there's no point in putting it in the toolbox. In which case you'd be better off just looking for a, a snippet or something like that, a snippet of code, because that's really all it is. It's all C-sharp. There's no visualization for it. 
Um, that it looks like uh, all of the questions as I go through. Cool. Tom would like to know if he can get some swag to his user group, but I'll hook you up with Tom offline. Sounds good. And uh, other than that, just a lot of thanks and a great presentation. Uh, which brings, lot, me, brings me to my uh, statement, too. Which is a fantastic presentation. Thank you so much, Pierce. Uh, it was really great. And for everyone else online, remember, these guest lectures are recorded, and they're going to be exclusively exclusively available to Xamarin University students. Uh, it should just take a few days for us to complete the rendering of it. And like Pierce said, we'll also have a link to any materials uh, that he has that you want to download, maybe some slides or maybe um, the source code. And remember, our next lecture in our September Back to School event is going to be next Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific time or 3 p.m. GMT. And that's going to be Xamarin's uh, Kristen Stutzman telling us about prototyping with Xamarin Forms. So make sure you register for that and show up again next Thursday at the same time. Other than that, thank you, everyone, for attending. And thank you once again to Pierce. And we'll all see you in class. Thanks, guys.